The Parachute Project actually started in Costa Rica um, with a series of paintings that Scott was inspired to paint there in his jungle studio. And yes, Co Costa Rica was a perfect place for me to make a departure from what I normally paint, which is something that I've wanted to do for a number of years. Um, I'll continue painting creation, as I always have. I've made a livelihood that way, and I'm grateful for that. This is just giving um, expression to another realm in my life. Um, I'm not Jewish, but I am a man of faith. The Torah is relevant, and I find it rich with content and meaning. Um, it's not meant to be an illustration. The, ch the challenge is to trust, trust more in the process and um, hope that I'm able to communicate the heart and soul of the stories through through the aesthetic, through aesthetics, with line, color, texture, paint, etc. Um, I read the text and I start the studies with tangible ideas, characters, symbols, and so on. And of course, using the technical knowledge that I've accumulated through decades of painting. In many cases, I push the frontiers of abstraction, but seldom completely breach them. So Scott got the paintings underway. Um, we marked the Feast of First Fruits there in Costa Rica, and we felt in our hearts that it would be good to honor the people of Israel as keepers and preservers of the Torah in some way with the first fruit of this work that was inspired by those scriptures. Um, our family has intimate ties with Native American culture, and um, this idea of honoring those who are do honor is very strong in their culture, and it's an idea that we have and a value that we've adopted. Um, while we were living in Costa Rica, we had the privilege of visiting the village home of the indigenous Waimea people. And um, we acknowledged the authority of Chief Don Miguel there, and Scott gave him the watercolor studies and told him about our desire to give the oil paintings um, as uh, that he did from the studies as a gift to, to Israel. So it was a really incredible experience. The chief welcomed us and his wife sang an honor song over us in her native Bahamian language. And they asked the creator to give Scott success in his work on the paintings. Awesome. Um, there was the, while we were at the village, there wasn't, I want to share a story, there wasn't any electricity in the village and the stars uh, were incredible, incredible yeah, so that night. And that night we were there, Don Miguel pointed up to a group of stars and said, these are my people, and then pointed to another group of group and said, these are the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Um, he said that on Friday nights he was going to look to the stars and blow shofar that someone else in his party, in our party, had given him and asked the Creator to um, care for all his children. Was, it was, that was just phenomenal to hear him say that. So uh, through that intimate ceremony of protocol, our mutual belief was that the Waimea people, in a spiritual sense, have a share in any goodness that comes from the paintings because they welcomed us there to their land um, at the original home of their people for Scott to do those paintings on their land. So here we are in the land of King David. Uh, these paintings have made a long journey. They started in Costa Rica where I painted them. I had to take them off stretcher bars and put them in a PVC tube. And from there I took them to the United States, framed them, built another crate, and shipped them over here. Okay, in a couple days we're going to have the honor of presenting these paintings to the Jerusalem Great Synagogue. And we feel really good about having them go there. This synagogue is dedicated to the memory of the six million Jews who perished during the Holocaust and it serves as a spiritual, religious, cultural, and social center for Jerusalem and world Jewry. Um, 
They say that outside of the Western Wall, there's no sanctuary that serves as a home, away from home for so many. And what's more, they're, they're, they open their doors to the nations, and they serve as a place of education for many non-Jews as well. From here, we have one final stop, and before we head back to, to the States, and that's Vilnius, Lithuania. Yeah, before, um, before the Jews of Vilnius fell victim to the Holocaust, the city, that city was once known as the Jerusalem of Eastern Europe and was a center of Jewish culture there. They had a library at that time of over 450,000 works of Jewish literature that was unfortunately seized and destroyed. So in recent years, a new Vilnius Jewish library has been started and we've been in contact with them and the founder and we're pleased that this library will be the first organization outside of Israel and Costa Rica to receive a piece of art from the Pirashop Project. So we're headed there next. <laughs> we're, as, as far as this project goes, Shelly and I are co-creators. Yeah, I, when Scott started painting these works, um, we knew we wanted them to be accessible to anyone. Um, and, and we began thinking about ways people could use the collection, of, you know, all 54 pieces. So I started looking at them from my own expressive, my own experience with expressive arts, and I started writing creativity prompts and adaptations of the Torah readings that go along with each painting. Um, so we're thinking that eventually we want to release the prints of the entire collection, and we envision it being something that people can take into their their own studios or you know creative places and use to jumpstart their own creative work and, and so that's kind of how it grew into the vision of inspiring others you know art it springs from personal interaction with the stories bringing new perspective from within not not imposed from the outside <laughs> and of course our family especially our kids are always collaborators with us in creativity and spreading goodwill wherever life takes us. Uh, yeah, definitely. We've lived and sojourned in many places and they have been right there by our sides. Their own creative works and inspiring ours further. Yeah, they, I mean, they, they really do light a fire in us. And also our patrons, the people who value and have acquired Scott's work over the years. Um, and those who believe in what we're, what we're doing now. We couldn't do what we do without them. Yes, thank you very much. So our hope is that these works will be accessible to all who want them and that they will open new wellsprings in the souls of those who experience them. <laughs>